This is Red Hawk Football on Frontier Community Access Television. Good evening, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving, and welcome to the Frontier Regional School, where tonight the Red Hawks welcome the Warriors from Mohawk Trail. Tonight's senior night here at Frontier, where we'll take time to honor the senior cheerleaders, football players, and band members. First senior tonight that we're going to honor is a senior cheerleader, Chloe Maripisi and she will be met by her parents Jennifer and Bill Maripisi and sister Isabel Maripisi. And now the senior Red Hawk football players. First player is number two, Riakis Edo McMillan, who will be met by his parents William McMillan and Janet Perez. Our next player is senior captain number 10, Garrett DeForest, and he'll be met by his parents, so Chip and Kelly DeForest. <laughs> number 24, Sam Hebert, escorted by his mom, Karen Sanderson, and his brother, Jack Hebert. Number 57, Dylan Appenell, who will be met by his parents, Dave and Stephanie Appenell. Okay. Number 66, Captain Andrew Logan, who will be met by his parents, Rich and Michelle Logan. Number 77, Jeffrey Styles, who will be met by his mother and father, Jennifer Styles and Jeff Styles. <laughs> Number 79, Hunter Wolfson, met by his mother, Becky. Reskevich, his grandma Lane, Grandpa Jack, and his Uncle John. <laughs> and number fifth number eighty-five, Captain Donovan Hoffman, escorted by his parents, Chris Hoffman and Molly Donovan. and his brother, Connor Hoffman. Yeah. 
And now we're going to take a moment to recognize the senior band members. So please congratulate Noah Babb. He's a senior alto saxophone player from Whitley, escorted by Mother Diane Babb. <laughs> Sam Hebert, a senior tuba player from South Deerfield, escorted by his mother Karen Sanderson and his brother Jack. Fisher Talbot Hills, a senior baritone horn and trumpet player from Conway, escorted by his mother, Laura Talbot. And James Morgan, a senior percussionist from, the, from Conway, escorted by his mother, Marcel, his father, Timothy, brother, William, and grandfather, Packy. Congratulations to all our seniors here at Frontier. Good luck in their future, and thank you for participating in all our Frontier success. High school football on Bear Country 95.3. Tonight's game, Mohawk at Frontier. And good evening everyone and happy Thanksgiving. Live from Frontier Regional in South Deerfield, it is the rivalry, the Frontier Red Hawks and the Mohawk Warriors. I'm Jeff Terrell, Sean Hubert alongside Dave Reno, our studio producer. Happy holidays to one and all. And we get set for the first of two Turkey Day hilt, uh, tilts here, Sean. We start off today with Mohawk Frontier. We've got Athol at Mahar tomorrow. But this one could be very interesting, Sean. We got the seven and three Frontier Red Hawks going up against the five and four Mohawk Warriors. And tonight, on a cold, windy, rainy night, this could be very interesting indeed. Yeah, so far so good as far as the weather goes. But yeah, good chance of wet tonight, and uh, probably going to come in here in a little bit. But right now, even when the kids were practicing, getting warmed up, it started coming down pretty good. And I'll tell you what, Mohawk was out there. They were in their formation. Most of those kids were dancing. They were having a great time. <laughs> and, you know, both teams ready for this game tonight, absolutely. Frontier has had the better of it. Uh, four consecutive wins on Thanksgiving Eve here, Sean, against the Warriors. They had a real easy time last year. And when the season began, as we looked ahead to the end of the season, most observers would say, oh, yeah, Frontier, heavy favorite. The game will be in South Deerfield. They have the better team. But a decent Mohawk team. They're guaranteed at least a 500 record, maybe better. And I think, myself, it is well within their capability to uh, to uh, turn the upset here tonight. Well, you know, again, you know, you're talking about the team from last year, which was Mohawk, you know, one and nine. Um, you know, they, they just didn't have, they weren't very deep. And now, with the addition of the kids from Turner's Falls, this has become a different football team. They're a little bit deeper. Again, you get Jaden Whiting out there. He probably would have been the starting quarterback at Turner's Falls. Instead, you utilize that kid as a weapon out of the backfield. Uh, lots of things that they can do, and again, we're going to see uh, we're going to see the quarterback uh, 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 Davenport chuck that thing up and down the field tonight, and he's a lot of fun to watch. And of course, for the Frontier Red Hawks, a very prolific offense. I mean, they usually live and die by the run. They always have great running backs, usually multiple running backs, but they can do it through the air as well. Mul multiple offensive weaponry there. Yeah, again, yeah, Garrett DeForest, we're talking about, he was the running back last season, converted to quarterback this season. He still has 322 yards rushing, but he's thrown for 483 yards on the season, four touchdowns, completes 50% of his passes on the season. So yeah, very good out of that quarterback position. I thought we were going to stop the uh, the anthem. There's the captains uh, meeting out in the center of the field there. But yeah, again, Garrett DeForest and of course Edo McMillan out of the backfield and uh, kids just uh, 976 yards on the season, so 24 yards away uh, from getting his name up on that thousand yard banner. And we know that that means a lot to him and certainly his uh, his teammates, the guys that block for him. And uh, really, it's a, it's a team award. So they're going to try to get that to him early as well. Captains meeting at the center of the field. We'll take a timeout here on our pregame show. They just finished honoring the seniors here. And in just a moment, it'll be time for Turkey Day football in South Deerfield. Frontier Mohawk next. Bear Country 95.3. Garrett DeForest, 
number 10, quarterback and linebacker. Enoch <laughs> Millen, number two, running back, cornerback. Dalton Hoffman, captain, number 85, linebacker, tight end. Andrew Logan, captain, 66, O-line, defensive back. Sam Hebert, 24, free safety. Jeff Stiles, 77, O-line, D-line. My name is Hunter Wilson, number 79, and I play right guard, defensive tackle. Hi, my name is Dylan Astrom, I'm number 57, play defensive end and center. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business, software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure, extremenetworks.com, Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. All right, the team's taking the field now for the opening kickoff. And it'll be the Frontier Red Hawks to receive the opening kickoff. 12-minute quarter, so 48 minutes, maybe more to decide this one, the latest edition of this rivalry. It used to be more of a Veterans Day rivalry back in the day, but they moved it several years ago to Thanksgiving Eve. Yeah, been and a while it's now, worked huh? out, uh, yeah. And we've had some, we've had some uh, kind of crazy events like that big snowstorm a few years ago, where they ended up playing the game on Friday afternoon with huge snowbanks up in Buckland and Mohawk winning that one in several overtimes. Yeah, five or six, right? All right, we are set for the opening kickoff from the 40. Mohawk kicking from the left. Mohawk receiving on the right. High end over end kick. McMillan's gonna have to come in, and he takes it from the 10. Center of the field across the 20. Gets away from one tackle out across the 30 up to the 32 yard line. So decent field position for the Frontier Red Hawks. And it was uh, Liam Driscoll on the tackle for Mohawk. First and 10 for the Red Hawks. Yep, pretty good return there and uh, pretty good defense as well as far as uh, downfield coverage for the Mohawk Warriors. So we'll see what the Red Hawks do here again. We know we're going to see a big dose of Ito McMillan and a little bit of Josh Samaski, some Alec Kirkendall mixed in there as well out of that backfield. All right, we are set for the first down carry. It's McMillan in the backfield. Nearly lost his footing, but he ends up getting his footing and brings it out across the 40-yard line. A nice gain on first down. It'll be second down and short. Yeah, good start by Ito. And as you had just said, as soon as he took the hand off, his first cut looked like his foot slipped out a little bit. He's going to end up gaining nine on that carry. So nice job for him to regain his footing. And... Again, that kid's quick. Well, mark him back a little bit. We'll call it eight on that carry. So second and two here now for the Red Hawks. Second and two. And they go to McMillan again. Has the first down into the walk. Secondary and off to the races. Into Warrior territory down inside the 30-yard line. A great start to the game by Ito McMillan. Well, and that's going to put him over 1,000 yards on the season, too. Let me get the exact numbers on that run. Let's see. He was at the 31. clock issue. We have a clock issue as well. Oh, I think it wasn't running. I didn't notice that. Yep. So they're going to keep the time on the field. So that's a 40-yard, uh, looks like a 40-yard run right there for McMillan. So two carries, 48 yards for Ito. He is over 1,000 yards on the season. Congratulations. But again, I know what he really wants, and that's the W. We've got a ways to go. It's Josh Samaski with a big opening on the left side. Brings it down inside the 30. Down to around the 25-yard line, close to another frontier first down. Yeah, Samaski again. This kid, just 5'11", 180 pounds, just a sophomore. Second leading rusher on the team. He's at 94 carries this season, uh, 441 yards. So we'll see a lot of him in today's game, and I'm certain we'll see a lot of him next season. Ball right around the 25-yard line. Second down and one. DeForest. He's going to give it to McMillan. He has the first down, cuts back to the left, spins out of the tackle, and is finally corralled down just outside the 15-yard line. Easy first down for the Hawks, and this has been a very impressive drive so far. Yeah, and you know, really, Jeff, that's not even bad tackling. It's just good running. You know, he's getting good, solid footing on this wet turf, and he's able to make his cuts and making guys miss. Looking sharp. First down and 10. Ball around the 15-yard line, and a fumble on the play. It is recovered by the quarterback, DeForest. So their first play 
The first play that did not really do much right there. And yeah. now you hear the reaction of the crowd as uh, public address announcer Dave Blanchett informing the crowd here that Edo McMillan did go over 1,000 yards a couple of carries ago. Yep, fantastic. And again, that's a whole team achievement right there. So congratulations. Second down and 10. Pitch, McMillan. Inside, give uh, on the other side. It goes to Josh Samaski. So it went to McMillan and then to Samaski. And Josh takes it inside the 10 down to around the 9-yard line. That's a good gain of about uh, 7 yards there. Yeah, they've been gaining big chunks on first down. That certainly makes it a little bit easier for the offense. Here it's third and they'll call it about 3. And the clock is running now, but that's not official, right? We said we were going to keep right, that on the yeah. field in the quarter. All right. So they're gonna, they'll probably set it at the next time out here. All right. Second, uh, third down and three. Pitch goes to McMillan on the right side with a lot of real estate. Turns the corner to the five. Towards the end zone. He is in. Touchdown. Touchdown. Frontier. Edo McMillan brings it in. It is 6 nothing Red Hawks. Yeah, and as you said, they did make that kind of look easy. Edo McMillan just flashing through the middle, finding spots, making guys miss. And again, quick, strong, fast into the end zone. 6 nothing Frontier. That did not take long at all. They had the one play that was a, a fumble. Other than that, all positive yardage. Two-point conversion try. It's McMillan again, and a huge opening on the right side, and he waltzes into the end zone for the two-point conversion. Time out on the field. First quarter action here on Thanksgiving Eve in South Deerfield. Our score on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Children Falls scoreboard. It is Frontier 8, Mohawk nothing on Bear Country, 95.3. All right, so Edo McMillan... It was a lot of him on that opening drive for number two, and now he's set to kick off. He's doing everything other than uh, sell hot chocolate and popcorn here. I, I could use some hot chocolate, by the <laughs> way, so if he was selling, I'd buy. And 19, Colin Brown, our Very impressive our drive. Warriors. Butter, meat, hot knife. Yeah. That's what that was. Right there it was, sure. Now let's a see long ways to go now. See what this Mohawk offense can do after the kickoff here. Yeah, we know. I mean, they scored 24 unanswered points against a pretty good Greenfield defense. I mean, they had their way with the wave that night. Up in Buckland, oh, it's and it's a whiff on the kick. It only went about two yards. I, I'm guessing he was trying to top it. Now, we saw that a couple of weeks ago in that playoff game. Remember, there was yeah. a kickoff, and we weren't quite sure exactly if that was intended to be an onside kick or not, but he hits the real top part of that ball, and it really only went about two or three yards forward. Ended up kicking to the right, and so the Red Hawks covered it up, but that's going to be great field position for the Warriors. Yeah, it's going to be right around the 42-yard line. It went about two feet. That was it. It was, uh, again, I believe an attempted topper, and he well didn't whiff because he obviously kicked it, but barely, yep. just barely got toe to leather there. Yeah, so this ball is going to be here at the 42-yard line for Mohawk to start this opening drive. So down seven, uh, down eight, nothing early here. And they come out in the pistol formation. Sean Davenport, strong year for him. And the give is going to go up the middle to Driscoll. And the ball is out. Who has it? Big battle for it. Mohawk did come up with it. Yeah, Driscoll took a pretty good shot as he was trying to spin free from one tackle, and he saw the ball fly out of there. Yeah, fortunately for Mohawk, there was somebody there to pick that up for him. So, yeah, going to be about a gain of three on that carry. We'll make it a gain of, yeah, a gain of three for Driscoll. We also need to pay attention to Cullen Brown, who has been uh, a bigger part of the offense lately. No Evan uh, Shippey. Whiting, we all know about him. And, uh, you know, at some point, I think we need to pay attention to the younger Driscoll as well. Brendan, he's been getting more offensive snaps. Yeah, absolutely. Unfortunate Evan Shippey going to miss this game out for the season. Uh, 656 yards he'll finish this season with. Handoff goes up the middle and a nice positive gain there for the Warriors. And the ball will go inside the 40-yard line and Driscoll takes it to around the 37-yard line. Third down and about five from there. Now, of course, uh, Jaden Whiting most likely would have been the starting quarterback at Turner's Falls this season. So, uh, we know, uh, again, we talked about him catching the ball and uh, running out of the backfield, but we know he can toss the ball, too, a little bit, so I wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing him launch one here tonight. Hey, the rain has pretty much dissipated at this point. Again, as Sean mentioned on the pregame show, it was coming down very heavily between about 620 and 645 or so, right when we took the air. I mean, it was really pouring. Now it's just raw. kind of feels like it... Uh, it did for those fans at Gillette back on uh, Sunday for that game oh, against the Cowboys. That was. I don't want to have been there. No. 
Coming a motion to the left, and we have players jumping, and Frontier jumped offside. Now we'll see. It's third and five. We will see if this five-yard penalty is going to I think that's gonna result go. in a first down. Yeah, if not, it's going to be very close. I was going to say, I think if you give them the five yards, I think that's going to be a first down. It's not an automatic first down, but they had a third, and it was about five. So let's see where he puts and the ball down. They're and, going uh, to look, and, and, and what are they going to do? Measure, are they going to... Measure. Move the sticks. They're looking. There lo looks like he's lining up a putt there on the far there side. First down. They, they will move the sticks. All right. So the first penalty of the game goes against the Hawks and an automatic first down. Not automatic, but a first down result there for the Mohawk Warriors. 31 yard line. First down and 10 for the Warriors. Again, they come out the pistol formation. Double wide, triple wide outs to the far side left. Single wide out to the near side right. Back to pass is Davenport, looking left, throws down there, that is caught. Another first down, Donovan Hoffman on the tackle. That is Whiting down there, number one. First down and 10 for the Warriors. Now that's just a, a really good sign for the Warriors right there. Davenport sharp with the throw. We saw Jaden Whiting, a couple, they're right in the bread basket, pop out on him a couple weeks ago, or last week. So uh, made a solid catch there and then started to turn up field. Good gain, 11 yards, first down, Mohawk right there. Looks like the ball is right around the 17-yard line or so. Warriors now looking to get the equalizer here. They trail 8 to nothing, but they have got a good drive going right here. First down and 10. Same formation, three receivers. Back to pass, some pressure, ball thrown underneath, and that is dropped as Davenport felt the heat, had to dump it off, could not make the connection. Yeah, just a little bit low, and as the rain starts to pick up here just a little bit, a little mist kind of floating through the sky as well. Yeah, did you see some of the crowd shots on Fox on Sunday? They showed some of the fans, and they looked perfectly miserable. I, again, you know, I, I, I had the opportunity <laughs> to go see that Steelers game, game week one, and uh, yeah. I was happy to be sitting in that 75-degree weather. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was looking at that TV going, I'm just glad I'm not there. I just oh, would yeah, not have the enjoyed fans, that. Right. And it was, it oh. wasn't exactly, it was a close game, but it wasn't exactly a scintillating that game by any stretch. Cool. No, yeah. thank you. Uh, again, pistol formation, three receivers to the left, now coming in motion to the right. And the handoff is going to go to Driscoll. He'll try the left side, has a hole, and makes a nice gain inside the 15-yard line. We're going to see how close to the 10 did he get. Yeah, that's a nice run there by Liam. And let's see, you're going to give him a gain of, uh, we'll call that six yards there. Yeah, down to about the 12 or so. So we'll call, uh, we'll call it third down and four. Well, three carries, 11 yards here for Driscoll. Clock in motion, 5.55 to play here in the first quarter. The uh, clock now official after uh, we had a technical glitch to begin the game. 8 nothing in favor of Frontier on a McMillan touchdown run and a McMillan conversion run. Two receivers to either side. Shotgun formation this time. Davenport takes it. And the give goes to the left side. Not enough for the and first Coco down. That was Cam LaCoco. Dave Blanchet can see these numbers, the light yellow on white, better than we can. Yeah, he, he cut that one uh, pretty good there, LaCoco's <laughs> first. Oh, uh, he, he's, he's, he's got the uh, binoculars. He did bring That's the binoculars. Why. We talked about it last time. I we know, and I forgot to bring mine. Yeah, yeah. That would be very helpful. What we're talking about, fans, uh, people that listen every week know what we're talking about. Mohawks road uniforms are white jerseys, and they have yellow numbers so yellow on white not the easiest thing to pick up yeah. especially at night we'll glare off the uh, lights there and uh, yeah yeah oh they bring in the big guy at fullback i know this is going to set the stage they go up the middle on fourth and short got pulled back don't think he got it I think they turned it over. He needed to gain about three. He got about two. Yeah, we've seen that before. You take one of the biggest guys on the team, throw him in the backfield. And Aiden Duncan, number he, 70. Yeah, he almost got there, but they're going to say no. So Duncan with a carry for a yard or so, but not enough for the first. So, yeah, they will turn it over on downs. So a nice drive going, but Frontier, as uh, they're known to do, I mean, they're big, they're big, strong, tough dudes in the trenches, and they... You know, they were kind of giving up some big yardage there, but they were able to clamp things down. They get the ball back on offense now. Just outside their own 10-yard line, first down and 10, 4.47 to play in the first quarter. They lead 8-0. Drive number two is underway, and that's going to be McMillan again. Now he's been the featured back, and he takes it on the right side, makes a nice game, but then get pushes back. Brings it out to around the 15, 16 yard line, second down coming up. Yeah, five carries right now. Let's see, he's gonna gain, uh, we'll call that a gain of five, so 66 yards. 
And, uh, yeah, Josh Samaski, a couple carries here in the first quarter for 14 yards himself. So, yeah, 70 yards on the ground, 80 yards on the ground between these two fellows already. And now they go to the I formation. Handoff goes up the middle. Not a lot there. I'll see what that ball carrier was. Kind of ran right in the center of the line. McMillan, there's a battle for the ball, uh, by Ito, the way. Ito had the ball. And Mohawk says they have it. The officials say they have the football. Well, I'll tell you, I can't tell you what happened there. I wish I could, but it looked as though Ito went into the middle and the pile just uh, unfolded as people were getting up. And there was Mohawk with the football. First and 10, Mohawk. And the ball is, let's see, looks like right outside the 15-yard line and great field position, obviously, for this drive. They're going to be in a drive in the red zone, yeah. trailing 8 nothing. but this is, a, this is a golden opportunity for the blue and gold. Got to say, got to take uh, advantage of this here, absolutely. Four minutes to play here in the first quarter, down 8, but, yeah, this is a gift. Pistol formation, Davenport calls the signals. Quick shot on the right side. That pass is underthrown. Was it actually caught? It was caught. Nice play there by Cullen Brown. Complete to number 19. Yeah, Cullen really had to come back and slide. and Not much of a gain, however. Yeah, I was going to say, he wouldn't be able to gain uh, much after that. About a half a yard. We'll give him a yard to the 15. And it'll be second down and nine from there. Clock in motion, 3.35 to play here in the first quarter. 8 nothing. In favor of the Red Hawks, they scored after a very impressive opening drive from, you know, from the 32 right down the field, mostly on the legs of McMillan, who scored, and he ran the conversion as well. Garrett DeForest has not attempted a pass yet in this game, hasn't had to. All right, Davenport over, looks over the Red Hawk D, now calls the signals, he's back to pass, looks left, flat, comes out. And a high pass overthrown. He was looking to get it over to Lococo on the... Uh, and that's overthrown. We'll see about the flag. Yeah, Lococo had some space. Ball just slightly overthrown. Two of the four officials conversing right now, and they're saying what? Oh, maybe that one guy saw one thing and the other guy saw another. And they're, kinda be, they're discussing gravy recipes maybe for tomorrow. Is what they're doing. <laughs> you like the giblets in your gravy or no? Um, they're still talking. Yeah. You do? I like the giblets. Okay. Well, that's not the point. But. They're saying giblets or <laughs> I just, yeah, yeah, they're still... They're no, one no, guy, one guy, he, he said no. No, yeah, no, 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 no giblet. No giblets. But here's and a penalty. it's going to be a chop block and no giblets. No, chop block against the Warriors <laughs> will be 15 yards. Boy, there was a very uh, animated conversation between those two uh, Referees. Yeah, it, the, went, uh, it went on longer yeah. than I would have expected. So they're going to mark this off from about the 15. So, yeah, you're right, Sean. It's going to bring it out to the 30 yard line. This is a big penalty. Let's see where he finally does put it down. We'll call it the 29, actually. It's interesting. There was uh, quite a debate there before they actually decided to pull the trigger on that. The flag flew early during the play. Second and 24. Second and 25 from the. Red Hawks. Obviously not what you wanted there if you're the Warriors. Get that fumble deep in frontier territory. All right, Warriors break the huddle. Two receivers, Lococo and Whiting up top on the left. Colin Brown to the near side right. Pistol formation. Now coming in motion is Brown from right to left. Back to pass the old swing pass and can't make the connection to Cullen Brown. And now it is third down and long. Same play they tried coming in this direction and uh, basically the same throw and the same result. He caught the first one for a yard, but this time couldn't get back to get to the ball. Just a little quick to get that ball out is Davenport. Give him another second to set his feet and make a solid throw, and that's good play. 29-yard line of Frontier. Third down and 24. And again, after the fumble, the Warriors took over first and 10 from the 15. And they have worked backwards since then. There's a big play here. At least make it a it's four down territory. At least make it a makeable fourth here. Yep, need a chunk. Davenport will give it to Driscoll. Bounces to the outside and then gets pounded as Frontier's defense came up and really laying a lick on him was number 66, Andrew Logan. Uh, and you could just tell too, as Driscoll was trying to bounce out to the left side, this Frontier defense is just too fast for that. And he's gonna gain a yard on that play, but yeah, it's gonna bring up a long fourth down now. You know, Sean, I think, you know, this is such a long fourth down carry. No, I, of course you're going to go, but. Looks like they might be setting up for a field goal. 
We let's see. We got a couple. Well, this it would be over over a forty yarder. It looks uh, like. Are they gonna? You know, if you're gonna do it, do it on Turkey Day. It looks like. Uh, are they going to? No, they're, they're gonna take gonna, a timeout. They're out. gonna call a timeout. We'll step aside for the break. We will see what happens. A little bit of early drama here in South Deerfield. Two nineteen to play in the opening quarter on the conquest of Greenfield South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It is Frontier eight Mohawk nothing. Sean, you're right. Sean Huber, you're absolutely right. They're gonna set up a field goal from the 36 yard line. This is gonna be a 46 yard attempt and Edo McMillan's gonna go back into the end zone. Yeah, you can field that ball if it comes up short. Remember the Iron Bowl a couple of years ago, That's Auburn right. took it all the way back against Alabama. All right, they have it lined up. This is a 46 yard attempt. Placement down, the kick is up, it's on its way. And it is short, Boy. short and left to McMillan. He wanted to take a shot at it, but it went out of the end zone. But hey, the distance was just about there, Sean, that close. It wasn't a bad bit, I'll tell you what. In this weather, now the rain's coming down a little bit harder and the air is heavy, that ball is hard. and. That's a pretty good kick from there, kid. Yeah, he came up short, and as you said, just to the left. But and Sean, I well, I like the call. Clearly, the kicker had a decent shot at yeah, that there, Sean. And really, on fourth and that long, statistically, statistically, the the odds of them getting the first down there were very, very slim. Yeah, so we were talking quick kick. Actually, you know, it might have made sense there too. So yeah, mm -hmm. that, yeah, that wasn't that wasn't that was a good bid. Well, they took a shot at the three, didn't get it. So first down and ten from the thirty-yard line, back to Eda McMillan, fumbled the last time. And he gets stacked up and pushed back after a short carry. So they're now, start, they're now starting to really key on Ito. And really, why not? Seven carries, 66 yards for him. And we've only seen uh, Josh Samaski with a couple of carries. Other than that, it's just the two of them. So, yeah, why wouldn't you? DeForest hasn't run the ball, nor has he attempted a pass yet. From the 32-yard line, second down and eight for Frontier. Rain now coming out a little bit heavier. Out come all the umbrellas. The force gives it to Josh Samaski, cuts to the outside, and he gets ripped down from behind. Nice defensive play there by, it's either Lococo, no, actually, I think that's actually 19, Cullen Brown. Oh, it's Matthew uh, Pollen, number Ballen, 10, yeah. okay. Yeah, there you go. Thanks, Dave Blanchett. Pollen's had some pretty good games himself. Nice tackle there against Samaski. 5'11", 180, had a head of steam. He actually was kind of pulling him down by his jersey there at the end. Yeah, third down and about four. Short three, long four, we'll call it. And here comes Samaski again. Breaks the tackle at the line of scrimmage. Has the first down, but a flag comes in in the Mohawk secondary. As the play went to the 50. So a gain of about 13 yards there if it sticks. And I'm thinking yeah. it is not. What a great stand. run by Samaski, though. Just the tiniest space for him to get through. Looked like he wasn't even going to get past the line of scrimmage. He picks up 13, but yeah, that's not going to count, and it's going to be, I believe it was a It was a hold, hold yeah. yeah. It was a hold against Frontier, so they will step that off. And that's going to bring the ball back inside the 30-yard line, down to around the 27. Third down and about 11 from there. All right, Frontier, now they come right to the line of scrimmage. DeForest, under center. Here comes Samaski again, breaking a few tackles, but Frontier's able to wrap him up. Cam Lococo was the man who finished him off, but he brings the ball back out across the 30 to around the 33-yard line or so. Fourth down now for Frontier. Yeah, good strong run by Lococo, 25 yards now, three carries for him, but going to bring up a fourth and long here for Frontier, and most likely they would punt this thing away. They will be punting. After the game, they're going to reveal the... Uh, the two memorial players of the game, Timothy Dash Memorial Award for Frontier and Michael Gaffigan Memorial Award for the Mohawk Warriors. Now Donovan Hoffman runs onto the field. They didn't have enough guys out there and they're gonna have to burn a timeout here. We'll take the break. 18 seconds left here in the first quarter on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It's Frontier eight, Mohawk nothing. Jeff Terrell, Sean Hubert, studio producer Dave Reno here. We get set now, McMillan. Back to boot this one away. He'll, he's going to hit it right around his own 23, 24 yard line and gets away a nice boot and backtracking and calling for a fair catch. Jaden Whiting right around the 30 yard line or so and that's where Moak will take over with 10 seconds left to play here in the opening quarter 8 nothing Frontier. Now that's a nice job by Jaden again getting underneath that thing and corralling it again the wind 
Not too windy, but the rain's starting to come down pretty good as well. So you're looking up into the lights into that rain and uh, Whiting calling for a fair catch. Smart play there, so the Warriors go back on offense here. And we'll see where they end up spotting that thing exactly. Gonna be down around inside their 30 yard line, just inside yep. the 30. 10 seconds left here in the quarter. Close game so far. You know, he had to wonder that opening drive. Frontier went right down the field, but Mohawk has done a much nicer job since then. And they had a drive stall out. And an attempted field goal of 46 yards. All right, first down and 10. And the handoff is going to go to Driscoll up the middle. And Liam brings the ball across the 30 to around the 32. And the clock is stopped with two seconds. Well, wait a minute. We're going to say that's the end of the quarter. That is the end of the quarter here in South Deerfield. Turkey Day 2019 on the car quest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It is Frontier 8, Mohawk nothing. Back after this on Bear Country. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by... Extreme Networks, customer-driven networking for your business. Software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure. ExtremeNetworks.com Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. And again, we want to say Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Hope uh, if you're heading out of town tonight or early tomorrow that uh, you have safe travels. If you have uh, family coming in, enjoy your holiday. Thanksgiving, I mean, I don't know anyone who doesn't like Thanksgiving, Sean. I don't know. How could you not? <laughs> it's the best. Big old turkey. Mohawk, Football. Second quarter with a second down, second and eight. All right. The ball is on the 32-yard line of Mohawk. Mohawk. Mohawk now will be moving right line. to left here in the second quarter. Trailing by eight, they're gonna send three receivers to the near side left. One receiver wide up top on the right. Second down and long. Pistol formation. And that is Davenport in a shotgun with his running back Driscoll right behind him. Coming in motion to the right. Quick swing pass. And that is caught in the right flat. And up near a first down and Let's see, not quite a first down, but a nice offensive play there by the Warriors. Yeah, and again, the ball was well thrown there by Davenport. He did exactly what we just talked about, set his feet, made a nice throw, swung it out, and then the, uh, the receiver was able to gain a good chunk there. Let's, uh, we'll call that six, seven yards on that gain. That yeah, was uh, Matthew Pollan, number 10 on the reception. He had come in motion. And again, three receivers to the near side left. So same formation they've been using a lot lately. This time no one's coming in motion. No, nope. Pollen will go in the motion to the right. And the handoff goes to Driscoll. Frontier though comes blasting through. They stack him up and they drive him back. And it'll be fourth down coming up. I'll tell you what, Garrett DeFore has led that. And he just came off the right side and timed it perfectly. He got a perfect jump. Almost it looked as though he'd gone offside, but just that quick. So now fourth down. And Well, we saw the Warriors last week on fourth and one from pretty deep in their own end go. Yeah, and on Turkey Day, you know, if, you're, if there's a time you're going to be unconventional and go for it on fourth down in your own territory, it'd be, on, uh, it'd be now. Well, we saw Coach McLeod uh, go for it on fourth down three times at least last week. All right, they are lined up in punt formation. So Davenport looks like he's getting set to boot it away here. And Edo McMillan back at around his own 20, 25 yard line. Snap goes back, they are gonna boot it. And McMillan's gonna let it bounce. He's gonna get chased back to around the 15. Takes it up on the right side. Across the 25, across the 30, lowers the shoulder, went right over a Frontier player and brought it out to the 40 yard line. Wow, he is not the biggest kid, but when he gets up ahead of Steam, Sean. That was Aiden Duncan that came up, the first guy to meet him. and. You can tell when you get run over when you come up and you got to readjust your face mask because it's kind of on the other side of your, where your head is supposed to be. And Whoa. wow, you just got run over. But you know, McMillan, a little dangerous there. The ball and the wet turf and a couple defenders right there. And he says, ah, I'm going to take this thing. And off he went. Good, good return there. Big pop and yards after that as well. And good field position for this next drive for Frontier, their first drive of the second quarter. They lead 8 0 with 10.08 to play in the half. 
And first and 10 from their own 40. This play is whistled dead off the snap. I didn't see a flag come in. I think it was actually a timeout. And a timeout was taken. Well, they're saying an official's timeout. So we will not take the break, Dave Reno. I know he's getting ready to pull the trigger on the commercial, but hang on. Oh, and Wolfson we're going to keep it right bit. here. Wolfson came up a little bit lame. Hey, you know, Sean, you were talking about the helmet kind of getting twisted around. You, did, did you ever hear the Fred Lynn story? Um, Don't think so. He played football. He was actually recruited to USC to play football. And he was a teammate of Lynn Swan. We all know Lynn yeah, Swan. He's the Steelers. They roomed, didn't they? Not sure if they roomed. I know that they were teammates back. This is the uh, early 70s at USC. Uh, Lynn ultimately said, yeah, my future's probably in baseball, and I'll, I'll probably last physically longer by staying in baseball. But he had one game where his helmet got completely turned around, well, halfway turned around, and he was looking out through the ear hole. <laughs> that kind of gave him the idea That's that funny. maybe baseball might be you have a that, better option. Have that epiphany, yeah. Yeah, he, lo he was looking out the ear hole. It's not a big space. That's hard to do. <laughs> All right, first down and 10, and DeForest will give the handoff, and Ito, again, he's, uh, they're loading him up here on senior night in the last game of the season, he brings the ball to the 45, a gain of five, it'll be second and five. Yeah, all Ito all the time right now, 73 yards on eight carries for him, and the only other guy that touched the football is uh, Josh Shemaski, three carries, 25 yards. Second down, we'll call it about uh, five-ish. And it's Ito McMilligan on the right side, bounces through, has the first down, wraps up the ball, as looked like Mullick was trying to kind of punch it out. If the Patriots do so well with, uh, the ball ends up on the 43-yard line of Mohawk, and that's another Red Hawk first down. Yeah, the Warriors have been very aggressive on that. We've seen them force a lot of turnovers here through the season, trying to rip that thing out. But they weren't able to get that away from uh, McMillan. Run for a first down over the 50-yard line. At about the 44-yard line, we'll call that. And now it's Josh Samaski's turn. He'll take it on the left side. Not a lot there, but he is able to kind of use his strong body to kind of fall backwards and give him a gain of a couple there. It'll be second down. Yeah, I'll give him two, so 27 yards now. So, again, everything on the ground right now for the Hawks, the 8-0 lead. Back, back to Freddie Lynn just for a second. When, when he had to give up football or decided to give up football at USC, he had to go to talk to he legendary head coach John McKay. Oh. And uh, I'll finish that thought in a minute. Second down and long. Here comes Ito on the right side. Gets a hole, squirts through into the secondary, still on his feet. Brings it all the way down inside the 25-yard line. And that was almost all Ito yeah, McMillan. I was just going to say, yeah, this kid's just been so much fun to watch. And again, not a big kid, but just strong and fast and just has a nose for where to go. And let's see where they mark that ball. He's going to be all the way down to the 25, 24. Another 18-yard gain for McMillan. Wow. He has come to play tonight. 24-yard line, first down and 10. Garrett DeForest, he'll roll out to pass. This is new. Garrett lets it fly. It is caught by who else? McMillan, left flat, makes a nice juke move on the left sideline, lowers the shoulder, and he is down inside the five-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, it looked like he looked back as if he might have stepped out of bounds, and then he just kept running. And, and it looked like a couple of uh, Mohawk defenders yeah. thought the same thing. Yeah. They kind of let up. Yeah, and all of a sudden, there he was, and nobody was stopping him. First Finally got knocked out of bounds, but just outside the goal line. Yeah, the ball is inside the five. We will call it uh, the one-yard one one yard line. line. One or two. And Frontier now looking to go up by another score here. All right, DeForest under center, takes the snap, gives it on the right side, and Ido McMillan is in for his second touchdown of the night. Yeah, 107 yards here in the first half, 11 carries. It's the Ido McMillan show right now, 14-0 Frontier. Hawks went for two on the last touchdown. McMillan ran that one in. Man, oh man, what a night. For number two, number two is number one tonight. So far. In his last game for the Hawks. They're going to go to Alec Kirkendall, the fullback. And he is in easily for the, well, hang on. It looked like they were going to, and then they decided, and now they're talking, and now he is in. 
Two-point conversion is good. Timeout on the field. 7.28 to play in the first half. Carquest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. It's Frontier 16, Mohawk nothing on Bear Country. All right, back here in South Deerfield, and Edo McMillan has a teed up on the 40. Two touchdown runs, one conversion run. He has scored 14 of the 16 Red Hawk points. And the skies have opened up. It is absolutely pouring out right now <laughs> here in South Deerfield. We knew there was a 100% chance of water. Short end over and kick goes out of bounds. Oh, a flag no. comes oh, in yep, as yep. the Frontier cover man just leveled a Mohawk player who was not even playing the oh, ball. Oh, and now another flag that got thrown against, I believe, the Red Hawks. Now that's going to be, that could be two 15-yard penalties right Yeah, that could be, that, yeah, right that, that could be 30 yards in penalties. Uh, the yeah. first one we can, I, I, the, so the ball was kicked high and it bounced and it ended up, it was going to go out of bounds. There was a Mohawk warrior that came up and really was not even anywhere close to being able to field that ball and he just got leveled by a Red Hawk. Now that drew the first flag. Yeah, and that was an easy call. Now two officials are talking. Yeah, you're, you're right, Sean. A, a second flag came in about five seconds later. Yeah, no, actually, actually it was a third flag. Two guys threw it on the original, but then there was a kid yapping over here and I think that might have drawn another 15. So again, they're having a conversation now. But that could be, uh, that could be, a, that could be 30 yards right there. We'll see how they shake this thing out. And by the time they sort this out, we might have an inch of uh, water on yeah, the field. Yeah, it is coming down now, yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get personal foul against Frontier and unsportsmanlike conduct on Mohawk, the penalties offset. I didn't see any Mohawk players in the area. I mean, that's why I assumed it was against Frontier. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, well, maybe uh, the second flag, the third flag that came in was, that had to be the one that thrown against Mohawk. I saw the referee looking at a Frontier player. Maybe he wasn't the one yapping. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't see the Mohawk penalty. I thought maybe both against the Hawks, but uh, all that, and, uh, and we're going to leave the ball right where it is. So, all right, so they're going to get that all sorted out, and Mohawk now will take over first down and ten. The ball is on the 45-yard line, their own 45. They now trail. 16 to nothing. We still got a game here, folks. I mean, Frontier was the home favorite, and obviously Mohawk the road dog. But <laughs> Mohawk, the good news for them, if there's a Mohawk team of recent years that has it in them to come from behind, this would be it. They can throw the ball. They can run it. They, they can get it done offensively. They so. can score some points. No question. Yeah, Hand off right. up the middle. Yeah, not on that play. Driscoll had nowhere to go. He's going to get dropped down for no gain, maybe even a loss of a half yard or so. Yeah, 10 carries and uh, 12 yards right now for Liam. So, right, so, so I have to finish this. Yeah, yeah, this. yeah. So he's, he, he, has to, he decides he has to quit football. He has to go talk to legendary coach John McKay. They called him God, by the way. <laughs> so he had to walk into Tough his time. office. And his office was very dark, very dimly lit. He walks in, he's sitting there like, like the Godfather. Mm -hmm. And he's stuttering and stammering and he said oh yeah i just think my future's in baseball so i'm going to give up my scholarship and uh i'm not going to play anymore and mckay he already knew what he was in there for he said okay okay freddie i, I think you're making a mistake <laughs> turns out it wasn't a mistake <laughs> no i don't think so but that's as the coach of course he's gonna say that second down and 10 from the 45 yard line now under center davenport had it dropped it picked it up ran up the middle and a flag comes flag in. The play. official throws the flag right at the pile of bodies at the line of scrimmage. So who knows what this may be. Broken play. Davenport ends up picking it up and just trying to chug forward there. And he would picked up a couple of yards. And, yeah, there was just a mass of bodies, both each trying to go the other direction. And the flag was thrown right in the middle. We've had no less than three or four lengthy consultations between officials that's a face mask against the Red Hawks that's 15 yards and an automatic first down and boy I'll tell you the Warriors needed that yeah and again this uh, after that last play where we weren't quite sure and we had those offsetting penalties but that was a 15 yard or so again yeah you don't want to make this easy on the Warriors but right there you kind of handed them here a little something six and a half minutes to play you're up 16 but Making that field short for him. First and 10 here for the Warriors. 33-yard line of Frontier. First down and 10 now. 6.15 to play here in the second quarter. 16 to nothing in favor of the Red Hawks. And the Warriors will send two receivers to either side. Pistol formation. Davenport with Driscoll right behind him. Sean calling out the signals. And now we had motion. The left tackle of Mohawk is slapping his 
fist on his own helmet because he knew that he jumped. So you shouldn't do that. You should just point the other way. <laughs> Don't hit yourself in the head like you messed up. Just yeah. point like the other kid did it. And yeah. Sometimes you can sell that, but that's going to be a five-yarder against the Warriors. So the five-yard penalty brings it back to the 40. Well, brings it back to the 43-yard line. So first down from there. And Mohawk breaks the huddle. And Dave Blanchett, the PA announcer, is informing me that the tailback right now is Cam Lacoco, number 14. Not Driscoll. Still the pistol formation. Davenport, long snap count, takes it. Rolling to the right, under pressure, lets it fly, underthrown. Again, he, he realized the defense was bearing down on him. It'll be second down and long. Yeah, just didn't have enough time, really, that when he was trying to scramble, get to the outside on the right Thank side. That three. was starting to close up on him. Again, threw it short of the receiver. Three of six right now passing is Davenport. Are your game notes and your stat sheet still dry, Sean, at this point? Well, that's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about my new to you uh, gift certificate. This oh, that's right. right now. Am I going to be able to use this now? <laughs> we, we can talk about how I got this, by the way, if you want it later. My new to you gift certificate. 43 yard line. You know how I got that? Second down and long. One receiver to the far side right and trips to the near side left. Pistol formation, second down and long. Mock needs a play here. Bobble off the snap. They're trying to set up a screen. They float it out. It is caught, but ripped down oh, immediately. Oh, oh. Donovan Hoffman came yeah, down and ripped down, down the receiver, Lococo, for a big loss back to the 49. Frontier sniffed it out. That is just a fantastic defensive play there. They had that screen set, and everybody, the blockers were out front. Ball received, and then bam, there's Hoffman. Hoffman's had some really good games. Offensively, he's caught a bunch of balls, but defensively, he's had a tremendous season. So the ball all the way back to the 49-yard line. The first down marker is inside the 30. So they got, <laughs> they got a long way to go here to try to convert here. Yeah, complete a pass and lose. We lost about five on yeah, that. Yeah, about, yeah. Yeah, because uh, from the 43 back to around the 48. So... You know, listen, you know, they have two downs here, but I, I would have to say that if this third down play doesn't go anywhere and you're at midfield, you know, I'm sure that they, I'm, I'm guessing that they would punt, but if they can make a decent gain here and make it a manageable for it, they may go. Yeah, look at the clock. We're just at four minutes and 10 seconds to play, so you've got to take that into consideration as well. 16 to nothing in favor of the Hawks. Trips to the right side now for the Warriors. And now a flag Bad down. Play. And that is a delay of game. So, again, at the high school level, you don't see the play clock as you do in college and obviously professional football. Well, last week, our game, we didn't have our first penalty of the fourth quarter. The Warriors and uh, Senators. Oh, that's right, yeah. Not one penalty in the first half all the way through the third quarter. There's finally one in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that game in orange against the uh, Mahar Senators. We'll be there We're tomorrow. We'll see them tomorrow, yeah. yeah. And the track will be drier. A, the rain will be over by then, presumably. And B, it's an artificial turf surface. So it might be a little bit slippery, but it, it won't be a mud bowl. By the time this game's over, I'm guessing <laughs> it's going to be very muddy. The field's holding up pretty well right now. Yeah, no standing sure water, but yeah. it's coming down. Not yet, but obviously between the hash marks, we're near the end of the season, so they'd have seen a lot of football action here. Third down and long. Davenport airing it out deep on the right side, looking for his man. Battle for the ball. It's batted Davenport down. Pass. Hey, we're looking to get it down there to uh, Whiting. It's uh, around the 30 yard line. That would have made it fourth and about three, yeah. but instead, fourth and 25. And I mean, that, you got a point. I would have made it close there, but yeah, again, a well thrown ball. Uh, good coverage, <laughs> and uh, actually, either one of those guys could have come up with it and ends up falling incomplete. So yeah, here, fourth down, 3.15 to play. Frontier's got two timeouts remaining. They had to burn one earlier. We will have our Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report coming up at intermission. And, uh, yep, yeah, they are going to drop back in the punt formation. Davenport, he'll hit it right around his own 35, 36-yard line. And McMillan back to his own 20. He crushed that last punt. Yeah, he'll need to do that here again. Snap goes back. Here come the Hawks. Short punt this time off to the left. And McMillan will not get a chance to return this one. It is put down 
at around the 36-yard line, and that is where Frontier will take over. First down and 10, 3.05 to play here in the first half, and it is still 16 to nothing in favor of the Hawks. Yeah, you can see Davenport did try to get that one off a little bit quicker. The pressure was coming right up the middle, and he ended up pulling it just a little bit to the left, but a good bounce there and a decent roll. And uh, having McMillan not touch the football is always a good thing, so not a bad punt all in all there. Uh, now the Hawks have plenty of time, three minutes and five seconds to go. Again, two timeouts here in the half. McMillan has had a huge first half, two touchdown runs and a two-point conversion. Now this play was probably going to go to Ito, but timeout a timeout by called Mohawk. by Mohawk before the snap. We'll step aside, 3.05 to play here in the first half. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard, it's Frontier 16, Mohawk nothing, Bear Country 95.3. Well, coming soon to Bear Country 95.3, we have high school basketball. I think we have a 25-26 game regular season package, boys and girls. And also coming soon to Bear Country, hockey night in Greenfield. Oh, We're going to do four regular season hockey games for the Green Wave, and that, of course, that's Franklin County's hockey team. We might see football lurch in that direction, but yeah, it's, it's Greenfield High School hosting over at Collins Mullen Arena, but they're gonna have players from all over Franklin County lacing them up. And it's going to go to McMillan on first down, breaks into the secondary right side, he may be gone. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, and ridden down from behind by Driscoll, a touchdown saving tackle, but let's see. Oh, there's, oh, a, flag. there's a flag. And it looks like it's gonna come all the way back. We think the officials are talking. It is a hold against Frontier. I didn't think anybody was gonna catch him. Driscoll did a nice job tracking he him down. He did, yeah. That was still fun to watch, but not fun for Ito, as he's gonna walk all the way back now and gonna take a 10 yard penalty on top of that. So insult to injury there. Sean, I've seen a lot of nice uh, posts on social media about the Greenfield-Turners Falls rivalry that uh, has been at least temporarily suspended. We'll see how long, if it's forever or for a year, for two, five years, wherever it might be. But um, we'll talk a little bit more about this at halftime. But no matter what school you play for your senior year, this is big. And the Turners kids that came up to Buckland they got to play one final season, one final game. McMillan bottled up in the backfield, but squirts through, keeps the legs chugging. You talk about making lemonade out of lemons. He got close to first down yardage there. In fact, he did. They're going to move the sticks, I think. Yeah, first down. Well, then he ran into Goodell, and then he just even kind of blasted him back a little bit. He's yeah. a big guy. And Robert Goodell's very big, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a big dude. So clock rolling still here, 220 to play now. Hawks do get the first down. Ball at around the 42 yard line. 16 to nothing in favor of the Hawks. And back to pass. And evading the sack for now is DeForest gets away. Now he'll take off on the left side looking for some blocks. Takes off, has it. Still going first down and more. He may break it. 20, 10 to the five, run out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. DeForest, he was nearly sacked twice. Yeah, Driscoll had him and then all of a sudden one of those big old linemen almost got him and then he keeps squirted out of the backfield and then he was off to the races. So that's gonna be, let's see, where was that line of scrimmage? 40, yeah, 42 uh, yard two, line. So eight, let's see where they marked that thing. But that'll be the first carry for Davenport of the game. and. And they're going to mark it uh, yeah, sure they're around there. the three, four, four yard line, something like that. So we'll go that 46 and uh, eight, be 54 on that carry. Wow. First and goal. And it goes to McMillan. Does he have touchdown number three? Yes, he does. Over the right side, three touchdowns in the first half by Edo McMillan. It is 22 to nothing. Yeah, again, just like that, we're looking at the clock. We're thinking three minutes to play, long field for Frontier. They're up two scores. If Mohawk can just keep them off the scoreboard. And, and then right there, Garrett DeForest, 54 yards and minute 42 left here to play the first half. It's now 22 to nothing Frontier. And uh, they will line up to go for the two again, as you just heard from PA announcer Dave Blanchett. And 
They are two for two. This time they're going to go to Samaski, and he is into the end zone. The two-point conversion is good. Minute 42 to play here. And actually, we'll keep it here because uh, Frontier is going to uh, kick off very briefly here. And the rain is really coming down now. But you, you, you mentioned it, Sean. I mean, I don't know what it's going to look like by the end of the game if it continues to rain like this, but... So far, it's not, it's not turned into a mud bowl yet. No, we've seen this field. It generally holds up pretty good, but those are spots in the middle. You can see where they're a little darker, a little more worn out, but yeah, they're not mud puddles yet. So, so far, so good on the field. And yeah, been a pretty uh, steady rain now here for the last little while. So Frontier now getting set to kick from the 40. Mohawk is in their huddle. And I look back, Sean, in that, uh, I think it was the, fir yeah, the first quarter when Mohawk got a fumble from McMillan and they had it on the 15 yard line first and 10 yep. trailing only by 16 points at that point yeah 15 yard penalty there yep. set them back they weren't able to overcome they tried that field goal long field goal good bid just came up a little short left in a big game like this uh, you really have to do your best to avoid those big errors that uh, really hurt your chances, uh, particularly on offense. Sorry, right, McMillan set to kick from the 40-yard line. The Warriors, number one, Jaden Whitey. And here comes the kick. Short end over and kick. It's taken by Moak, bobbled, and fortunately for them, they just jumped on it. That was a good play down there. Just uh, don't try to pick it up and run. And uh, that was Cam LaCocco who ended up just jumping out at it right around the 29-yard line. So a minute 38 to play here on the half. We will see how quickly the Warriors try to move down the field here or if they're conservative and just uh, take it in the halftime trailing by the three scorers. Yeah, that was Levin Prondecki that was going to try to field that thing and it was just going kind of up over his shoulder as he tried to make the over-the-shoulder grab and was able to knock it down. LaCocco uh, covered it up along with uh, Prondecki. So... Now, yeah. Lev Levin's one of the younger guys that came up. He's a freshman who yeah. came up to play for, uh, from Turner's to play for, for Mohawk. But, yeah, you know, the Turner's kids and the Mohawk kids, because they were in danger of not having their program either without the help of Turner's. They, you know, those guys who played all those years, they got to play their senior season. Yep. And that is awesome. They go to the eye formation and the fum uh, fumble on the snap. It is jumped on by Mohawk, and we're going to really – have a lot of leniency with the quarterbacks and the centers here on a night like tonight in terms of uh, losing the handle of the football. Really not their fault. I mean, it is pouring out right now. Yeah, he never had the chance. He did never uh, got the handle on that snap. But, yeah, I was able to go down on the field a little bit, and I hadn't really caught, caught up with Coach McLeod much this season, so it was nice catching up a little bit with the season and, uh, you know, chatting about how all this worked for him. Obviously very happy with the results. And uh, Jaden Whiting happened to be over, came over, gave him a big hug, and uh, he said, hey, man, how was your season? And he said, I had a good year, you know. So, uh, yeah, you're right. These guys got to come out and play some football, and they're happy to be here. Second down and 11, and a fumbled snap oh, again, and this time Frontier got it. Well, yeah, again, even if they hadn't, that's uh, just not going to work for you. But now, uh, under a minute, 49 seconds to play, boy, you're in danger of uh, – getting buried right here down 24 yeah. and uh, this could be very bad the ball is right around the 30 yard line and as Frontier has shown between Samaski McMillan obviously and that incredible run by Garrett DeForest to set up that last touchdown it does not take them too long to get into the end zone they are going to call a timeout here and we'll step aside for the break 49 seconds left to play here in the first half and on the car quest of greenfield south deerfield and shelburne scoreboard it is frontier 24 mohawk nothing this is beer country 95.3 well i'll tell you sean we're uh, hopefully going to talk to a very big prominent part of the greenfield turner's rivalry of the past at halftime but it was just looks like frontier is just going to uh DeForest is going to, actually he wasn't at quarterback, he's now taking it himself on the left side, has the first down and more still going, and he is inside the 15 yard line and they, yeah, no conservative there, they're trying to score one more time here yeah. before halftime. And again, I believe they have one more timeout remaining, so. Look at this field, Sean, the fog yeah. and the rain, and it just, it looks like an English moor at night, this is crazy. Inside the 10, it is, uh, we'll call it the just outside the five yard line. 28.9 seconds left. And they've called another timeout did Frontier. I'm not gonna give away who it is. 
But we're going to talk at halftime with, uh, again, someone who uh, played a big role as a player and as a coach in the greenfield turners Falls rivalry, which has been suspended, hopefully just temporarily. But the commercial that just played a minute ago, Scotty's on the Hill. Boy, when the game was over in Turner's, heading up the, or any, ga any game at Turner's Falls High School, heading up the hill, I, I would always come over from the radio station in Greenfield and often stopped in there. Yep. Grabbed some food on the way, saw people that were also heading up to the field. It's going to be weird that we're not driving over there. Uh, the game would have been at Turner's Falls High. It's it's, it's just bizarre that we're not going to be there, Sean. Yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, yeah again, uh, still a little bit in denial, I guess. But, you know, I mean, I'm excited about watching that Al Al Mahar game. Again, Absolutely. that one's uh, you know, a longer, even a longer standing tradition. And yeah. I understand they still get some pretty good crowds down there. And. Uh, you know, we're hoping Athol can hang in again. They're pretty lean this year and struggling, but hopefully we'll have a good ball game. And But, yeah, just not quite the same. And Ball's out. Ball is out as it went to Garrett DeForest, and they're still back for it. It's like a wet bar of soap. Right, Big cool. battle Warriors for it, it, and the uh, Warriors got it. So they dodged the possibility of giving up a fourth touchdown in the half. They still trail by 24, but now they keep them out of the end zone. And obviously, Sean, make the, they had consecutive fumbles on snaps a moment ago. Make sure of the snap and just down down, down the ball yep, and get, yep. in, get in for halftime. Yeah, second fumble in the half by McMillan. And again, wet ball, wet turf, and that thing just came squirting out. But, yeah, right now, just don't make a mistake. Again, you just dodged that bullet down by 24. Could have been worse. So, yeah, I would just take the knee here and go in at halftime and try to make some adjustments. Again. Mohawk, it's, they're not a team that is totally defensive-minded with very little offense, i.e. get a lead and try to ride the defense home to victory. They do have the offense to get back in, but been a rough, rough game here so far. Let's see if Davenport takes a shot downfield. Whiting's lined outside the right, left here. Davenport takes the snap. He is back to pass, throwing out of his end zone, throwing downfield incomplete. And I'll tell you, Jake Dodge had that ball in the crosshairs. He missed, you know, didn't really have a good shot at it, but he wanted to do a pick six. I'll tell you what, Dodge made a couple of nice catches in that playoff game. Oh, uh, sure did. Yeah, down Chicopee. Yeah, 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 late, he late sure in the did. game, we didn't have much chance to talk about those, but boy, could, kid looked athletic there. And yeah, you're right. He, uh, he could see right exactly where Whiting was going to cut that route and try to cut off between where the ball and Whiting wanted to be. And the ball just never quite got there. Well, maybe now you take the knee. 15 seconds to play yeah, here. Yeah, 15 seconds to play here in the uh, in the half. I like the idea, but again, yeah, if you throw that thing and it gets picked and then you end up giving up a touchdown here. Yeah. Eh, we'll be a little more conservative right now. Yep. Again, uh, conservatism sometimes goes out the window on Turkey Day, but you have the eye formation behind Davenport. Sean takes the snap. He is back to pass. Steps up, throws on the right side. Tipped and incomplete. And now there are nine seconds left. It's going to be third down and long. I almost got picked twice. And Jakey Dodge back there again, got his hands on it. Now Frontier used all their timeouts, right? Because the reason I'm saying that yes. is if they pass again, it's going to stop the clock. And it's going to be fourth down, they'll have to punt. Yeah, the Hawks have used up all their timeouts. Okay. The Warriors have one left. So, hmm. We got third down? Well, I guess you take one more shot. One more shot, I guess. But fourth, you'd have to punt. Fourth, you'd have to punt, and you know, send McMillan back there to get the punt could be dangerous. All right, third down and ten from the five. Davenport with backs in the eye behind him, and they'll go to the running game. And a big gainer up the middle. We'll see what that ball carrier is. Could be Cam Lococo carrying that. And that was a flag. Now the half can end on a. Defensive penalty, well, so we'll see. That's going to be a big run. That's going to be about a 15-yard gain for Lococo. Yeah, out, out to the 20. If that's a flag against the Red Hawks, then uh, the Warriors will get one more play on top of that. We'll see what they uh, decide here. We will see what they're going to say. Face it is a face mask penalty, and that is going to go on Frontier. Yeah, five penalties, 55 yards here in the first half against the Hawks. It doesn't include the 15-yarder that was offset. Well, now this changes everything. You, they'll have one untimed play yep. to end the half, and now really go to your. You can go to your bag of tricks here. Well, we were just talking about being conservative down inside your own 10, but yeah, where you are right now, you got to take a shot again. Davenport can air that thing out, so 
Try to get it to one of those speedy guys and uh, see if he makes something happen here on the last play of the half. All right, this could be whiting time here. That could be. Yeah, it could be whiting time somehow, some way. He's had some big games. Again, whiting uh, leads the team in receiving yards, 292 yards on the season. All right, Whiting is one of the guys coming to the near side left. Three receivers to the near side left, one up top of the right. They go back to the pistol formation. One untimed down here. Snap is back to Davenport. They're going to set up a screen. Sets it up on the right side. The pass is complete on the right side, but only goes for a gain of a couple of yards, and that will end the half. I'm looking for flags. Nothing there. That's that. The pass is complete. And that will do it. Halftime here, Turkey Day 2019 in South Deerfield. And our score on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It's the Frontier Red Hawks 24, the Mohawk Warriors nothing. The Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report next on Bear Country. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks. Customer-driven networking for your business. Software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure. ExtremeNetworks.com Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. And welcome to the Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report. We are in South Deerfield. Our halftime score, Frontier 24, Mohawk nothing. Jeff Terrell, Sean Hubert, studio producer Dave Reno. Once again, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Pleased to be joined in the booth by this guy. He was, uh, we were talking about, he, he's a prominent part of the Greenfield Turners Falls rivalry, which again, we're going to say it's on hiatus, hopefully. We'll come back someday, hopefully soon. But this guy was a player for one of the teams in the rivalry, later coached that team. Now he is an administrator for the other school. And uh, don't forget, he's pretty good at Pioneer, too. And, and won a Super Bowl at Pioneer. Mike Dupree. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> How Happy you doing? Happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. And you come down here and, and check out another rivalry game. This is good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, football is, is part of Thanksgiving, and uh, we've got to do what we can do to catch whatever we can. Now, when you were a player at Greenfield back in the 1970s, Greenfield usually had the upper hand. However, Turner's had some great schools, uh, great teams uh, back in that era. Uh, what was it like the night before, so tonight, the Wednesday night before the game when you were a player? Oh, boy, that was a long time ago. Um, <laughs> Come on, you remember. Well, I, I, I do remember the few days uh, uh, just before the game and uh, – Back in uh, 74, 75, there was, there was one key Turner's Falls player that I think we all remember, Kevin May. Mr. May, yeah. And, uh, and so um, I certainly had Kevin May on the mind the night before and uh, trying to figure out what I needed to do to try to, try to stop him and uh, uh, keep him away from the ball on the offensive side. You later played some uh, college ball down at Springfield. You ended up getting into coaching and uh, ended up taking over at your alma mater back in 1983. Now, as a coach, now now it's all about the kids. You you can't control how they play. You have to prepare them for the game. What was it like the night before the big game against Turner's, knowing that usually you have the upper hand, but on Turkey Day anything can happen? Well, anything can happen, and uh, as I've I've said year in and year out, that um, throw out all the records. Um, and the night before Thanksgiving, uh, uh, we would we would have a, a, a short practice, but um, typically year in and year out, we, we did a Springfield College tradition called Burning of the Old Shoe, and we did some reminiscing, um, and um, we, we look, look a little into the future and uh, try to uh, plan for the, the next day, and what do we want to remember? What do our memories want to be? You know, I, I actually don't even have a question. I just want to say of, uh, <laughs> of all the men that have done this, uh, you're one of the ones that I certainly admire uh, uh, the most. And uh, you, uh, you did a great job everywhere you were, affected a lot of people, a lot of young men, and uh, made, them better, made them better young men. And I appreciate that about you. And uh, uh, we've been seeing you on uh, Friday nights and Saturday afternoons down on the field. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. It, it was my pleasure. Um, you know, I put a lot of years in and uh, 
uh, it was all about the the players and uh, it, you know we we had uh, some really good players some some great teams oh you um, at Greenfield you took it to the finish line so many times but finally you got over the hump at Pioneer I'll remember yeah. that night the rest of my life took, that, me, that, took me 30 years to get there <laughs> but you got it done yeah the Six super Super friends, the super friends, the coaching staff up there, didn't he? You had uh, like Howe up there, well, and you had Gaffigan, you know, and uh, who else? You had, you had yeah, Jeremy there, Felton. There. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Successful people um, <laughs> yeah. surround themselves with with good people. Yeah, and yeah. I've I've had some some great people to coach with, and uh, some parent booster clubs, and of course a lot of players and. Uh, you know, I, I I couldn't have had half the success I, I have with it without the people that I have surrounded me. Last point before we uh, before we let you go here, Mike. Um, you know, football in the future, huge question mark about it. Times have changed. We're not, you know, the the toothpaste is out of the tube. In some ways, it's not going to go back the way it was. Those big enrollments, the the big families. We're just so hopeful that it can continue in some way. Yeah, can only hope that it's going to turn around. Uh, you know. All the coaches in Franklin County back in the 90s, we, we worked really hard and we put together uh, the Pop Warner, Pioneer Valley Pop Warner Football League and, and uh, we had 18, 18 teams at the time and uh, really tried to push the, push the game itself. Um, and just over time, uh, I, I don't have the answers, but uh, we can just hope and uh, just keep, keep uh, pushing for the game and, and uh, you know, it's... To me, it's still the greatest game on earth, and uh, yeah. so many lessons can be learned. And uh, when you when you step on the football field, you become a better person in life. And uh, I, I hope uh, I, I I just have hopes that it can turn around. Thank you so much for coming on by. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thank Amen. you. Love you. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. Mike Dupree, right. former Happy Greenfield High School player and coach, and now, of course, as part of the Gil Montague Regional School District as an administrator. We'll take a time out here on our halftime report. More from South Deerfield next on Bear Country 95.3.
All right, back here in South Deerfield, we get set for the second half between Mohawk and Frontier. So great to see Coach Dupree there. I have to say, I saw him this past spring at the Western Mass uh, softball final down at UMass, and he was wearing the blue for Turner's He looked so we He looked good. <laughs> he looked real good, but he looked weird. Sometimes <laughs> guys in the opposite color just, it doesn't, yeah, they look a little funny. But, it was uh, a little weird at first. I could see know. him rocking the blue. You know, but, you know, we, we, we saw Wade Boggs and Roger <laughs> Clemens in, in pinstripes, Johnny Damon. So Same idea. There is some precedent. <laughs> and who knows, will we see Tom Brady in a uniform other than the Patriots? Yeah, you don't know. Well, we don't know what's going to happen next year. Yeah. So. Very interesting. We get set for the second half here now. And um, Mohawk comes out. Sean, uh, some opportunities offensively. Let them get away. But defensively, you know, they're not a bad defensive team, really, but they're just having a tough time, uh, you know, squaring up and tackling these guys. You know, pr predominantly McMillan had a huge first half. Well, again, we saw this early in the season, too, with that Mahar Senator team. And, again, that was a pretty good Senator team, as it turned out. We kind of thought they were, and they didn't even look bad, but they just couldn't stop this Red Hawk run. They, Red Hawk scored on every possession except for one in that game, and uh, there was just nothing the Senators could do. Mohawk, they're doing okay, but the next thing you know, you got DeForest running for 50 yards this way, or McMillan for 40 yards that way and you know that's just Warriors will begin the second half on offense McMillan has a teed up on the 40 and three deep men for the Warriors if they can get a good drive here and score make it a three possession game again we may have a game well really that's what they've got to do is get on the scoreboard here quickly and uh, yeah a frontier score before a Mohawk score in this and that probably could be lights out so yep they need a good good start here to the second half for the Warriors if they have any chance to come back and win this thing. Now, McMillan's been kicking it short. He has not kicked it anywhere near those speedsters on the deep line. And now a line drive straight down and right through the wickets. It's picked up on the right side. And Cam Coco takes it across the 35. And that's about where he will stop. So first and 10 for the Warriors, trailing 24 to nothing here at halftime. Three touchdowns in the first half for Edo McMillan. Yeah, three touchdowns, pair of fumbles, 117 yards rushing, 13 carries for Edo. Samaski ended up with four carries for 27 yards there in that first half. And DeForest, uh, you know, basically spent most of the first half just handing off the football, but then he became a big prominent part of the offense. He dropped back the pass. He evaded two sacks and able uh, to squirt away and set up a touchdown, had another long run. He, I mean, yeah, that kid's very fast, so you pick your poison, I guess, when you go up against the Red Hawks. First down at 10, 35 yard line, and the ball is out as half the line moved, the other half did not move. I thought there had to be a flag there. I mean, that, yeah. That was just disjointed from the beginning. Now, the Red Hawks ended up on top of that football. Yeah, but. but now the they're going to throw the flag. Okay. Throw the flag. Yeah. There had to be a flag. Yeah, there. That's, there had to be a flag. And that's going to go against the Warriors. Okay, yeah, that, they, at least they got it right. I mean, the flag should have come in about 30 seconds before it did, but at least, they're, at least they are getting it right. Yeah, I mean, that would have been a fumble and a turnover, but yeah, just so half the line moved, and by the time that ball was snapped, half the frontier uh, defensive line was in the backfield already, so. March them back five. Try that again. First and 15 instead. First down and 15. Ball now back at the 30 yard line. Backs are in the I formation. And now we got players jumping again. And I, you know, now it feels like we're back to week one. Yeah, well, you can see the Hawks. They kind of come up and they're kind of, you know, they're moving around and uh, yep. they're kind of causing these Warriors to flinch a little bit right there. That's exactly what that was. Another five yard penalty. And back to the 25 yard line and first down in 20. So, yeah, the Warriors not helping themselves at all here, Sean. No, nope. five penalties, 35 yards in the game. The uh, Red Hawks have been penalized five times for 55 yards in this one already. So, Seen quite a few flags. They had the two offsetting 15-yard uh, penalties as well in that first half. First down and 20 from the 25-yard line. The first down marker all the way up to 45. So Warriors, they are going the wrong way yeah, here. Again, not the position you want to put yourself in when you're down by 24. They need a play here badly. I formation. They bring the lineman in as the as the blocker. Davenport under center, he's back to pass, throws on the right side, gets it to Jaden Whiting. Brings it up to around the 35 yard line, so a nice gain of 10, and that's the play 
frankly, Sean, that's the play I've been looking for not only tonight, but uh, for several weeks here. Yeah, yeah. quick slant, going to gain. Uh, we'll give them about, see where they marked that thing, but it's going to be close to 10 yards. Yeah, we'll call it, uh, we'll, yep. we'll second, call it 10, yeah. Yep. Second and 10, but. Uh, uh, reception. But yeah, because it's yards after catch. I mean, that time he, you know, he made a few yards after the catch, but once he has the ball, and if he has any kind of space, he can put a move on, and then he could be off to the races. Well, and he is athletic, so that's what you want to do, get him the ball in space. And well, again, we, we saw him try that last week against the Senators, but uh, White. Actually, he had just a couple of drops, just yeah, balls that right. hit him right in the hands on those little slants, and he was just too worried about where he was going before he caught the ball. But not this week, though. Second down and 10. I formation, double wideouts to the near side left, single wideout up top on the right. Davenport takes the snap, drops back, throws downfield, incomplete. It was thrown behind the intended receiver, Whiting. Still nearly made the catch near the first down marker. It'll be third down and 10. Yeah, pretty well defended and, and a ball that wasn't thrown that great and Whiting still almost came up with that thing and that would have been good for close to another 10 yard gain. Instead it'll be uh, incomplete. So third and 10 now with Davenport six of 13 passing. Yeah, it would have been a great catch. So we'll see what the Warriors come up with. We're guessing again. Uh, I think we're gonna see Davenport really fill up the stat sheet through the year now. You're down by 24. Oh, Can't waste too much time running between the tackles here. They're not afraid to fling it anyway, so yeah, we'll see him throw it a lot here in the second half. Coming motion, Pollen to the right, and the flag, flag on the play. I think it's a procedure against the Warriors. Yep. False start. So oh, the <laughs> five-yard penalty for a false start. And the ball will go back to the 30. Third down and 15. Yeah, so 15 yards and penalties on this drive alone right mm. now for the Warriors. Not the start you wanted here for the second half. No, not what you want at all. Making it hard on yourself. It's hard enough already. But yeah, third and 15 now. Again, nine minutes to play here. Third quarter, but down by 24. You got to get this offense moving here a little bit. I formation, double wideouts to the right, single wideout to the near side left. Davenport. Drops back to pass. Here it comes the rush. Steps it up. Deep ball, left side, looking for Whiting. The ball floats out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, if Davenport can just keep that thing about five feet to the right and give Jaden a chance to run under it, even if he'd caught it, he would have been well out of bounds. Well, that's two former Turner's Falls players who are going up against each other. As that was uh, Jake Dodge <laughs> uh, marking and guarding Jaden Whiting there. Both those guys played on my JV baseball team. And teammates. What other position other than ball hawking center field and I'm guessing a leadoff batter would Jaden Whiting play? Uh, he was my leadoff batter and he was my ball hawking center fielder. Yeah. What, what, <laughs> That's exactly what he was. What, what else are you going to do? And he had the green light if you got on base. He just had to look at me and I nodded and, he, yeah. uh, he, and he'd steal. <laughs> Smart coach. Look <laughs> yeah. at this. Ten out of the 11 guys for Frontier are coming. They're going to go for the block here. Snap goes back. Here they come. He got it away. And a decent punt. And it will take a roll, and McMillan's going to have to let it roll inside the 40 down to the 37-yard line. Ten out of the 11 guys were coming after Davenport, but he got it away. Yeah, nice job by him, just uh, keeping his calm and got his foot through the ball. And again, pulled it just a little bit left, but kept it short of McMillan so he couldn't come up and field it. And Best case scenario there, flip the field. But we've seen tonight it really doesn't matter where the Hawks are on the football field. They can... Uh, Score from pretty much anywhere. Big chunks of yards tonight. Of course, the 24-0 lead when they get the ball back here. 8.40 to play here in the third, and they again, they lead by a score of 24 to nothing. And now back out here on offense. So still a three-possession game, but it has the feel of a relatively easy frontier victory, at least right now. Hanef is going to go to who else? Edo McMillan into the secondary. Cuts back against the grain, inside the 40, down to the 30-yard line of Mohawk. Big gainer, first down. Yeah, give him about 50 on that carry, and you know, McMillan, even his head fakes are fast. Did you see that? Yeah. I'd, I'd hurt myself if I tried to do that. Boy, he ducks and the head moves, and the body just keeps going, and big rip for McMillan. Need to see a chiropractor. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Oof. 30-yard line of Mohawk, first down and 10. What a night to wrap up his, uh, his high school football career. He'll take it again. Squirts through, into the secondary again. Takes off, another first down. Down to the 15-yard line, another gain 
of about 15 there. Yeah, 172 yards. So these numbers really starting to add up now for Ito. 15th carry of the game. Three touchdowns already for him as well. And they are in the red zone again, looking to put this one away. Red Hawks, you know, they made the postseason again, but one and done as they lost on the road against Chicopee, a team that they lost to in a much closer game. Now they're, they're double hit off a fumble. Who has it? Frontier jumped on it. McMillan had it. And then the quick pitch to Samaski, who could not get the mitts on it, but the Hawks did recover. Yeah, McMillan getting the ball to Samaski is where it went wrong there. And again, ball, that ball's slippery, and it's hard, and it's wet, and... Just couldn't get a handle on it, but Frontier does save possession. Lost back to the 16-yard line, so it'll be second down and 11 from there. And now another fumble and a battle for the ball. Looks like Frontier got that one again as it slipped out of the hands of DeForest off the exchange from center. Logan, Logan, 66 on the recovery. Going to lose a couple yards again on that one, so now it's going to be third and we'll call it about 12 yards here. Yeah, 11, yeah we'll call it 11, third and 11 yards. I, like that. I just heard that fan go, way to go, Andrew, because the linemen, the, the, the guys in the trenches, they don't get the attention that the McMillans and the yeah. DeForest and the Whitings and Davenports get. Never will. Here comes Ito on the right side, has the first and the more. He may be gone. Touchdown! Fourth touchdown of the night by Ito McMillan. It is 30 to nothing. Yeah, not much more you can say about that. Four touchdowns, 100 and 86 yards on the ground. He needed 24 yards for his thousand, and well, he's just run past that. So just keep that number adding up. The one they're going to put up on that thousand-yard banner, and the scoreboard keeps adding up to 30 to nothing now. Red Hawks. The Forest fumbles on the exchange from center, and the two-point conversion is no good. 6:34 to play here in the third quarter on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. It's Frontier 30. Mohawk nothing, Bear Country 95.3. Number 11. All right, Mr. Do It All, Edo McMillan has a teed up on the 40 yard line. Four touchdowns on the night for the senior halfback for Frontier. They lead it 30 to nothing. All right, McMillan. Set to boot it. We'll see how deep this one goes. No, oh, deeper than any kick yet tonight. And here comes Jaden Whiting up the middle. Uh, it's Prandecki actually out to the 25 yard line. Mohawk back out on offense after this 30 second timeout. Hey Dave, we'll take it out of here with no music. We'll take it back dry. Uh, Mitzi Credo, he just texted me. He said, heard Coach Dupree interview. Said it was really good. Tell Jeff I said hi and happy Thanksgiving. Awesome. Who's that? Mitzi Cardo. Mitzi Cardo, yeah. Number 29. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I remember him. He signed it. <laughs> Little guy. He signed it. 5'3". Mitzi, 29. <laughs> it's cute. Well, that was cool. Sean just got a text from Mitzi Croto, former running back at Turner's Falls High School. He, uh, he was the original Minnie Mouse Fifth, uh, go, played at about 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, well, we talked about him for years to come. There was a guy that was kind of small but tough coming out of that backfield. Oh, he yeah. was a cruddle like back, and yeah. what a great guy, too. Back to pass. Davenport throws right side. It is caught in the right flat and shirking a couple of tackles and then wrapped up on the right side. The receiver down there for a gain. Yeah, I've often said this. There's only two things I do not like about Mitzi Croto. <laughs> One of his probably is hat. His favorite baseball team yeah. is the New York Yankees, and his favorite football team is the Miami Dolphins. Other than that, love the guy. It's a, just a defect there. I don't know what <laughs> just that is. Just those two but things. Yeah, yeah, other than that. <laughs> How does that happen? Pretty good dude. You wonder, right? Well, around here, Yankee fan, I get it. There's a lot of Yankee fans out here, but do Dolphins? Mm, mm, makes a sense. Well, when he was probably first following football, the Dolphins were awesome. He probably liked Dolphins. Probably likes the Dolphins. The yeah, color exactly. aqua. Yeah. Orange. They do look nice together. Sorta. <laughs> Sorta. Sorta not. <laughs> They're terrible. Yeah, kind of. Embarrassing franchise right now. Second down at about six after that completed pass. And gonna set up again, but a big rush and a sack. All the way back inside the 20 yard line. 
Davenport, I mean, I know he wanted to dump that ball off, but he had no chance. Yeah, first sack of the game there for the Red Hawks. And, yeah, that not was not, not his fault at all, actually. You could see his Davenport still trying to see where he could unload that thing, and then he was just buried, and he had a smart play just to eat that and take the loss. So the ball will go back uh, right around the 20-yard line, just outside the 20, actually. And it'll be third down and long from there. So they lose the yardage gained on that pass reception in the right flat and then some. And again, I, I've said it at numerous junctures tonight, Mohawk, you need a play here, a big play, not, not a play that is just positive yardage. You need something that really gets the Hawks on their heels. And Mohawk's going to call a timeout here. We'll take the break. 4.33 to play in the third. 30 to nothing Frontier back after this on Bear Country 95.3. All right, third down yeah, and long, and a flag. We got a mock player jumping again. Yeah, false start on the Warriors, so they're going to take it from third and 14 to third and 19. See one of the linebackers on the right side for the Hawks, just a little stutter step. You know, Moha, I mean, yeah, I talk about their offensive struggles here tonight. I mean, they, you know, they are trying, they're, but Mohawk, uh, Frontier rather, they're just, they're, every year, they're just, they're tough, they're physical. And they're fast. They got the speed too, yeah, absolutely. And here they come again. They Three. try to set up a screen. It is caught, but nothing doing. And Logan just comes up and rips down. I beg your pardon. I had Logan on that. That was actually number 61, Jake Bryant. Ripped him down. It's fourth down and long. Yeah, a couple of times they tried to run that screen. They've executed it, but you got one Red Hawk that stayed home and boom, blew up the entire play. So a loss on that. It's going to be fourth and a country mile here. Edo will drop back, and he'll be inside the 50-yard line to receive this punt. Edo will go back to midfield, and again, he has had one heck of a night. Four touchdowns, and he's going to try to make a return here. Again, Frontier bringing 10 out of the 11. They're bringing the house. Here they come. Got it away again, great job. And a nice punt, nice roll for Mohawk. McMillan <laughs> fell down as he was backtracking. The ball goes down to the 40 yard line. And we have an injured Mohawk player all the way back inside the five yard line. It looked like Ito got crossed up by the football. That thing was bouncing. He expected oh, to come one way. And I didn't see the flag because the oh. Mohawk player was lying right next to it, but that is actually. Well, where Davenport just got up from and that's where the flag yeah, was. That, could, thinking, be, that uh, could be roughing the uh, the punter there. I'll tell you what, I didn't see, I, I followed, I, the way the ball came out of there, it was amazing because as you j just said, the uh, the Hawks were there. The, everybody was coming at it. The ball flew out. I mean, it, again, hit the turf, and I was watching it roll along the turf. But, yep, that is going to be the call. So the Red Hawks, that's going to be a big penalty, automatic first down. Yep. So they will keep their offense now back on the field here. So a huge break for them, and we'll see if they can get something going again. We're down to 323 to play here in the third, and they're still being shut out here by this uh, awesome Red Hawk D. Well, again, and they've got to be able to take advantage when mistakes are made. Again, McMillan has fumbled the ball twice. One time, the Warriors had it down around the 10-yard line and uh, just not able to capitalize. They had their own 15-yard penalty that set them back. So, yeah, again, when you have these opportunities, they're handing you a gift right here. You know, you were punting that ball. Frontier was getting it back. Look at the air now. You Just the denseness. You can see this, we this haze. Now it's blowing across the field. Really thick fog is rolling in here. It's like here. a movie set, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it looks really kind of free. Yeah, this is... Uh, it's all clear over on the left. It's just kind of very, swirling. And now yeah. look at this. This, is, this, again, very, very reminiscent of what we saw at Gillette back on Sunday in that cool. game against the Cowboys. First down and 10 from the 31-yard line now. And inside give, nothing doing. They ran right into the heart of the Red Hawk D. The ball popped out, but well beyond the uh, whistle. And that's going to be a loss of a couple, second down. That was Cam Lacoco on the carry, by the way. Yeah, Lacoco. 23 yards here. Eight carries. A little bit of success. Not much there, though. Again, going to lose a yard or so. Two twenty-five to play here in the third quarter. Thirty to nothing in favor of Frontier, and this is just a surreal scene on the field with this fog rolling in under the lights with the mist. 
crazy. Got the big steam cloud where the kids come out of the huddle from all breathing there and big smokestack coming out of there. Second down and 11, backs in the I formation behind Davenport. Big guy got it. They are going Robert to go the up the middle. Robert Goodell, the senior lineman who they've had at fullback on a couple Here's of sets. Why not, start. right? Why not? <laughs> Good gain there. A couple yards, straight forward. We need more yards than that now, so third and long. Trying to think of the Turner's Falls player that they, they brought him out to play fullback on Turkey Day. He was a lineman. He was huge, and you brought him out on... on uh, I remember, play fullback. I remember Greenfield doing that too. Took a couple of those big old Greenfield's linemen on Turkey Day. Greenfield's done that before, and, yeah. Uh, ran them right up the middle. Uh, memory is not what it used to be, Sean. <laughs> I want to, wanna, I wanna, I'm <laughs> desperate to pull it through. I have to look back through the notes. Third down and long. They go to the big guy, but lost his footing. Yeah. And could you imagine though, you're, if he gets up ahead of steam, imagine coming out trying to block him. He no. easily goes about 260, 270. No, no, I can't. Can't imagine that? Nope. Or you don't want to win. Uh, either either way. way, nope. <laughs> yeah, he's a big kid. Yeah, you can tell he just did lose his footing there as he yeah. got through the line of scrimmage. The fourth down at about six. We're under a minute to play here in the third. All right, ball is spotted inside. Let's see. Just inside the 30, right? 29, we'll call that. No, no, it's the, the 35, sorry, 34 yard line. Yeah, 34 yard line. Got distracted by a crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what that is, right? You give a guy a green raincoat and he becomes the Hulk, I guess. <laughs> yeah. so is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> All right, play action and passing to the right side. Comp it short of the first down. A big hit. Forward momentum gonna be close. right near the stick, but where they're showing it, it's going to go back to Frontier. Let's see where they mark it oh, here. They and, got uh, it close. Yeah, he's yeah. a little bit shy. Going to be just a yard or so and shy. The receiver didn't go quite far enough, but good execution of the play there by the Warriors, but they will turn it over on downs. Oh, and good tackle there as well. Again, no more forward momentum after the catch. Just got blasted backwards and going to come up shy on that first down bid so Frontier will take over here up 30. Ball right around the 39 yard line of Mohawk. First down and 10. 19.4 seconds left here in the third. And what do we got? Did we see a flag come in? First down. First down no. for the Warriors. No. Is good for oh. First down. Oh, wow. okay. They're giving him the first. Well, I'll tell you what. Spot of the century. Where this guy was on this <laughs> side, where he walked in, but he wasn't the guy holding the football. The guy coming from the other side had the football. And now Mock is catching well, yeah, Frontier unaware. Not I'm, not sure, I'm not sure they have their real defense out there. First down and 10. Davenport now throws left side. No one there. And it goes incomplete. Well, I, we don't have the benefit of uh, replay. Well, this game is on uh, FCAT, so yeah. we'll have to take a look. I thought he was about a, a good yard shy, it even with the forward momentum. I but. thought it was going to be close. But two different guys, uh, referees, had two different ideas of where that ball was supposed to be. And I'm calling it spot of the century. Well, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. It, My it, eyes, you probably have better eyes no, than I No, 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 no. I, I think it was closer than we thought, but okay, I didn't think he right. got there. So. Uh, the, the Warriors will take it because yeah. they're still looking at a goose egg on that scoreboard. Yep. They, they may not win this game, but they want to take that zero down. Again, take advantage of these things. Yes, this is their chance. Nadell and Lococo in the I formation. Matthew Pollan in motion to the right. They're going to go to Lococo and Cam brings it up to the 44, 45 yard line. And that is the end of the third quarter, end of three here in South Deerfield. On the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard is Frontier 30. Mohawk nothing. Back after this. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Extreme Networks. Customer-driven networking for your business. Software-driven solutions that are agile, adaptive, and secure. ExtremeNetworks.com Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television.
Jake Bad, you want to stop? All right, play back on. A little swing pass to the left side is complete, but the receiver just buried over there on the left flat, Sean. No gain on the play. And Fourth no and gain on the play. Down. Fourth down and six. Yeah, that was Whiting caught the quick pass. And yeah, again, Frontier too quick to the ball. Defended that extremely well. So the Warriors now looking at a fourth down. And most likely going to go here down 30, beginning of the fourth quarter. See what they decide to come up with here. But again, we've seen them go on fourth down before. And this is a spot where it's pretty much do or die anyway. You're down by 30. Fourth down under center is Sean Davenport. Looks over the D, uh, and that time it looks like Frontier jumped, I think. Yeah. The offside, so that's going to take it from fourth and about six or seven to fourth to one and two. That one or two. Yeah, change the play call there. <laughs> Seventh penalty against the Hawks, 75 yards in penalties. We've had a lot of uh, laundry on the field tonight, as opposed to last week, where uh, not a lot. Oh, yeah, much better, uh, much more manageable fourth down here, fourth and about two. All right, see if they go to the big guy here. Or no, quarterback's going to keep it, and... Boy, he's going to need another miracle Ooh. spot, I think. They got a pretty favorable spot last time. I Yeah. Oh, he gave it to he, him. What? He gave it to him already, and they... I think oh, what a... Not, he, that's he, another... He just signaled first down, didn't he? Yeah, they're going to move the sticks. See, Sean, he didn't, he didn't make it. He didn't make it. He didn't make it. But no. Mohawk will take it. Hey. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he, was a, he was a yard shy on that. Two spots that I would suggest I they, they were stopped short. The first one I was less questioning. This one here. I'm <laughs> the consensus sure. in the booth is that's two very favorable spots. I, yeah. I, was okay. a, I thought it was a solid yard. They were going to be shy there. But All right. So again. Drive will continue. Take again. advantage. Take advantage, Mohawk. Get that zero off the scoreboard yep. here. No, they're handing it to you here. All right. They break the huddle. Waiting. Uh, no, that's uh, Brendan Driscoll now in the right flat. Backs in the I formation behind Davenport. And back to pass, throwing over the middle, underthrown. Would have been good for a first down at the 40-yard line of Mohawk. Underthrown there. Yeah, underthrown and the receiver slipped. He's kind of right in the middle of the field here, and that's generally where we see the, the wettest part. You can see where it's kind of chewed up a little bit, and that's right where he tried to stop and come back and just feet slid out and ball slightly underthrown, so no chance to make that catch there. Clock out with 8.52 to play. After the game again, they'll re, uh, be announcing the player of the game from each school here. Gee, I wonder who it'll be for Frontier. Yeah, sometimes it uh, just uh, <laughs> takes care of itself there, those decisions. Yeah, it'll be Edel McMillan, no yeah, question. So far. He'll get the Timothy Dosh Memorial Award. And now on the other side, of course, uh, each player wearing the blue and gold can state his case between now and the end of the game because I think it's wide open. Still up for grabs, absolutely. All right, second down and 10 from the midfield stripe. Davenport in under center, backs in the eye, takes a short drop. Let's it fly, deep ball, left side, and tipped away. Nice defense down there. They were trying to get it down the whiting down there. It'll be third down in 10. Yeah, double covered there. Whiting still tried to come back and almost had to play a little defense. Make sure that thing wasn't picked off. 21 passes attempted now by Sean Davenport. He's completed 10 of those. That one there, lucky it didn't get picked. Uh, the clock is still rolling right now on that incomplete pass, so we'll maybe we've gone to running yeah, time I'm not here. Sure if potentially that's, uh, intentional or not. That yeah, could be the case. We could check that. Usually thirty to nothing, though. Not, uh, not, not usually, yeah, right? Not usually, but it could be the case. We did have a running in the fourth quarter game here earlier, but much earlier in the year. That was against the Senators. And that was uh, Mahar, who we'll see tomorrow morning. Well, Mahar did that to Athol a few weeks and later. Mahar, <laughs> what goes around comes around. Yeah. Third down and long. Back to pass. Davenport with some time. Now running out of time. Let's it fly down the middle. Intercepted. There's our guy. Picked off. Dodge. Dodge takes off on the left side. Still going. Jake Dodge may go. Oh, he's got it. Wow. What a great play by Dodge. Touchdown. What a play by Dodge. That was just fun to watch. I'll tell you, Jakey Dodge. 
Rough start to his season, but he's finishing strong. Couple of big catches in that playoff game a couple weeks ago, and then that right there, and he had to run a guy over running down the sideline, keep his balance, stayed in bounds. Beautiful play by Jakey. Nice uh, job, kid. All right, it's official. After that play, okay, he, all is, right. he, he is no longer Jakey, he's, he's he is Jake. Jake. Jake Charles, how's that? Can I go with Jake Charles? Jake Charles. All right, we'll go with that. Yeah, you're right. He's no longer the younger he's, brother. He's no longer <laughs> little Jakey. He was, he was Jakey for a season and a half, almost right. two seasons. He's officially you. Jake. I'll give it to you. We'll what, call him Jake. what a play that was. That was fun to watch. He took it back uh, about 80 yards, Sean. Yeah, and ran some people over doing it. And they go for two. They go to Kirkendall up the middle. No. We'll take a one minute timeout here. 36 to nothing is our score here. Fourth quarter action. Their country 95.3. Wow. That was fun. All right, after yet another penalty against the Warriors, the ball now. Back inside their 20 yard line, first down and 10, they go to the big guy, Goodell, who's now become the fullback. Big number 79, he brings the ball out to the 24 yard line. Yeah, it's a nice gain of about uh, about five yards there, say, nice yeah, job. His best run yet, he had a couple of carries here for a yard or two, but actually we'll give him closer to six on that. So yep, yep, good first down play there for the Warriors, but not a lot of time left, 2.50 to play here. Again, clock's running and yeah, we have gone to running time here in the fourth quarter. We're down 36. Second down and five from the 25. Eye formation behind Davenport. And this time it's Lococo, second man through, and he's got first down yardage. And they'll move the six with 2.20 to play. Now I wish they would go to stop it here to try to at least assist the Warriors in getting the ball into the end zone. Well, here. again, you know, again, 36. I mean, it, it, they started running at 30, and generally 30, 36 points doesn't get your running time in the fourth quarter. You're usually down by 40 or 50 at that point. But We will be bringing you uh, the post game here. I'm going to get the mic ready. We'll put it right in front of uh, Dave Blanchett, the PA announcer here, longtime PA announcer here at Frontier. He will reveal the Tim Timothy Dash Memorial Award for Player of the Game, the MVP for Frontier, and also the same, the Michael Gaffigan Memorial Award for the Morocco Warriors. Goodell brings it over left tackle, brings it out across the 35 up to the 36. A minute and a half to play here. Again, clock is still running. Second down and four. For and Warriors four. not in a real big hurry either. Well, let's hear it for the fans here too because yeah. this is a, a miserable night weather-wise, but we had a decent crowd given the given what was going on before the game, and uh, they've all stuck around. Umbrellas are put away at this moment. Just a late mist. Just talking to Bob Provost, uh, Sean. He came in to record his... Uh, Holiday greeting for for Mackin. I'm I'm, I'm sorry for uh, Maury. Maury and Schmidt. Robert Goodell on a carry. And he was at that game. Goodell on the carry, and right Martin near the Ford first down marker. And he admitted, he said, "Hey, I've been to playoff games there in January at Gillette. He's a longtime season ticket holder. Yeah. He said, I've been at night games in January where it was single digits, mm -hmm. and I never left early." He said. I had to I had to bail it was the other bad, night. Yeah. It, was, it was the wind yeah. and the wet. Uh, I guess that that I he's that. like, I am out of here. I wouldn't want to be there. <laughs> All right, Danpour is going to air it out deep on the left side into double coverage, tipped oh, incomplete. Bad. And that and probably incomplete. was the last play. Again, they're not stopping the clock on the incomplete pass. So I'm going to wait for the official. If he takes his cap off. Uh, it looks like the Warriors are done. I'm going to get back to the huddle. Yeah, Six I'm, seconds I'm left. I'm looking at the lead official. I think they, they may give them one more play here. I don't know. Yeah, see. Yeah, might be it. They, yep, they called it. That is the football game. 36 to nothing. The final, the fifth consecutive victory in the rivalry for the Frontier Red Hawks. And we'll take a quick one minute timeout. And when we come back, we will reveal the players of the game for each school. This is Bear Country 95.3. Captains number 85, Donovan Hoffman, 10, Garrett DeForest, and 66, Andrew Logan, along with the Red Hawks seniors.
Congratulations, Red Hawks. And now the Mike Gaffigan MVP award for the most outstanding Mohawk warrior tonight goes to number eight, Sean Davenport. Congratulations, Sean. And the Tim Dash, most outstanding player for the Red Hawks tonight goes to number two, Riakis Ido McMillan. Congratulations, Ido. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Congratulations, seniors. Well, I'll tell you what, Sean. Easiest call for MVP for the winning team here tonight, Frontier. McMillan was phenomenal tonight. Yeah, again, coming in, needed, what, 24, 26 yards, whatever it was, to reach 1,000. Took care 1, of that right away, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they got that done on the first drive, and he ended up with upwards, uh, almost 200 yards, actually, over 180 yards rushing, and uh, again, 16 carries, four touchdowns, and uh, again, it was just Ito uh, being Ito, having a great week and a great finale to his career, and a lot of fun watching that kid. But as uh, prolific as the Red Hawks were on offense, defensively, they just never let a very good offensive Warrior team get on track. I mean, their defense, we've mentioned it all season long, all night long. They're, they're mean, they're tough, they're physical, and they are fast. The line was good. Donovan Hoffman, the linebackers are tough. And uh, again, every time Davenport threw the ball downfield, it seemed the receiver was at least double covered almost every time. So, yeah, I mean, again, they tried those screen passes. Those got blown up. Those could have gone for big plays. But, you know, Frontier, again, just one guy staying home and blowing those plays up made a big difference. And, uh, again, shows on the scoreboard right there, 36 zip. So the uh, trophy stays here in South Deerfield five in a row now for the Frontier Red Hawks, and they're one of the rare local football programs that seems pretty solid in terms of numbers, uh, success-wise. Hey, the success has been there. They make the postseason seemingly every year. Mohawk, we'll have to see. 2020 between the Mohawk team, uh, the Mohawk football players, and the Turner's kids that would be coming up again uh, next year. Turner's Falls, will they have their own program next year? Again, this will be decided months and months from now. But hopefully, we will see at least a Mohawk co-op with Turner's, maybe a Mohawk and Turner's team, uh, you know, playing separately next year. Well, don't forget about Pioneer either. And, and Pioneer, uh, you know, if, who they, knows, if uh, they can contribute some kids as well. Greenfield, yep. again, looking ag uh, to the future. Yep. One of the schools we're going to see tomorrow morning, Sean Athol, I mean, they're, they're hanging by a thread right now. So a lot of un unanswered questions, but let's talk about the Mohawk Warriors. They finished up at 5-5 five and five on the season. First year as a co-op between Mohawk and Turner's Falls. Not a bad season at all, really, Sean. They yeah. got, they, and they got up to a great start. Yeah, again, good start. Uh, again, coming off of a 1-9 and nine season and... Uh, Again, they barely made it through last year, as, as you said. I remember the first game of last season against Franklin Tech. They finished that game with 10 kids, and that was the opener. I thought, wow, how are these guys going to make it through an entire season? But uh, just with guts and, and, and hard work, and, uh, you know, they rallied. They were able to make it through, and, again, it was Turner's Falls that came up short this year, so uh, sent those kids up there. Huge addition. Those eight kids uh, brought a lot to the team. Uh, talked to Coach McLeod for just briefly before the game, but uh, he said everything went extremely well. Those kids that came up from Turner's, they were all uh, 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 young men of, of uh, just uh, helping out the team and all about uh, joining and becoming part of the Mohawk Warriors. You know, there was no rift. There was no difference between those kids. They became Warriors right away, and uh, again, you could tell by the, the, the way they were having fun down on the field, and Hey, Pre-game, it's pouring, they're dancing, they're having a good time, and uh, that's really what it's all about. This is a great rivalry game, no question about that. Frontier wins this one big, 36 to nothing, and the Mahar Senators will be a very strong home favorite against the Athol Red Raiders. Again, a program, they had to forfeit their game against Frontier th this year because of a lack of, uh, of available healthy players. Uh, but they are going to make it for Thanksgiving Day tomorrow, but it would be, uh, not, not a miracle, but it would be a substantial upset if they could pull off the stunner tomorrow. Yeah, we're getting you know, in those non-qualifier games, Athol had a couple of favorable matchups, able to get a couple of wins there. So you know what I mean? They, they, they were able to win a game. It, going to Mahar, yeah, it's going to be tough. Again, the Senators, pretty good season this year. Pretty pretty deep, pretty strong. And uh, Athol, they're going to show up with, I think, 12 kids. Um, and hopefully uh, hopefully they can make it through the game with, with at least 10 or 11 kids. And there are at least 11 or 12 kids. And, uh, yeah, again, you never know. It just, uh, it's just going to be an uphill battle for the Red Raiders. I was going to say, having said all the things you yeah. just said, it is Turkey Day, you and you never know. Yep. But 
we, th we think we have an idea of what may happen tomorrow. We'll be on the air starting at uh, 9.45 for the pregame show. It is a 10 o'clock kickoff tomorrow from Orange right here on Bear Country. Looking forward to it. Final score for the final time tonight here in South Deerfield on the car quest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. The Frontier Red Hawks win it by a final score of 36 to nothing over Mohawk. And for Sean Hubert and for Dave Reno, I'm Jeff Terrell. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Bear Country.